to today's Fronius webinar. Today we have got a very, very special webinar, um, like you already heard in the title, Get 100% Ready for Fronius Gen 24 Plus. So that's today really a very special one where we really go into deep into the insight on what is important when you do your first installation of the uniquely versatile new hybrid inverter series of Fronius. Your Fronius team today consists of me. My name is Kul Sandra. I'm from the team Trainings and Education. And I'm very, very happy that my colleague from the team Product Marketing, Leonhard Peberg, is today on the other end of the line. And he will support me today throughout the chat. So we will make it kind of interactive. Uh, Leo will join from time to time and give his valuable insights. He's in the product marketing and responsible for the Gen 24 Plus device. So he has got a very, very good insight into the product and into the solutions. Okay, uh, so let's start directly with the Fronius Gen 24 Plus. Uh, Finally, it's out now, so very, very good news. Uh, the Fronius Gen 24 Plus is since a uh, few weeks from now on available and you can order the Simo Gen 24 Plus. But before I start, I have prepared a quick poll for you. So I wanna know from you following question. Uh, I hope you can see it now. So. Did you already have your first Gen 24 Plus installation done? So is it already finished? Uh, that's a question from me to you. Uh, and three for possibilities. Yes, you already did several installations. Uh, yes, I did it once. Oh, or third possibility, no, but first customer projects are in the pipeline, so they're planned already. I see many of you voting already, so I will just wait a few seconds. Nearly 70% have voted so far. Uh, just giving you another 10 to 15 seconds before we directly close the poll. And then I, of course, show you the result. Okay, thanks for the participation. I will close now and show you the result. Okay, and the result seems quite clear to us. So nearly 100% did not install the Gen24 Plus so far. So they are um, uh, in the planning phase for customer projects. So thanks a lot for that. That's also very important to us that we know it from you and how deep we can go in the uh, ongoing topics. Thanks for that. Okay, so what is the Gen24 Plus uh, all about? So it's our uniquely versatile new hybrid inverter. So on the one hand, uh, the device which is already out now is the Simo Gen24 Plus. So it's a three phase hybrid inverter in the power classes six, eight and 10 kilowatts. It has got two MPPT trackers and one separate battery input. That means you're much more flexible in system design. And the good news, it's available now. You can order it via your wholesaler uh, and it's fully available. The counterpart in the one phase market is the Primogen 24 plus. So um, that device is actually not out now. It will come in the first quarter of next year and it will be available in the power classes from three to six kilowatts with again two MPPTs and one battery input, but uh, still some weeks to go until we will launch our one phase hybrid inverter. Okay, and what's the goal or the scope of today's uh, webinar? So uh, there is a really young market start of the Simogen 24 plus. And me and Leo, we thought about, okay, what could be interesting for you? And we kind of gathered in all our departments information from the sales department, from the technical um, sales advisors, from the tech support, also from the product management. And we collected all this information and packed it today in 
this webinar and we really want to answer the, answer the questions what do our customers want to know about the Gen24 Plus. And when doing this feedback round, uh, we came, it came out that 50% of you wanted to have product information and the other 50% uh, are looking for technical details. And if we go now into more detail and watch it more precisely, we see that in the product information, there are two main, uh, three main topics, which is the system design part, the PB point, the basic grid backup power function, and the compatibilities. And on the technical information side, it's all about the commissioning, state codes, smart meter TS, and also third party compatibilities. That means these, uh, what you can see here on these slides, are more or less the main topics we are confrontated uh, on a daily basis. And we will cover, of course, today within our special Fronius Tech Talk. So let's start directly with the product information. So first topic is system design. What is very, very important to know if you want to work with Gen24 Plus and Fronius is um, to know our super flex design. It means we have got from now on with all Gen24 Plus inverters, two MPP trackers on board and one set separate battery input where we can directly connect a DC coupled high voltage battery. Uh, in case of the Gen24 Plus, it's the BYD battery box premium HVS or HVM to those battery input. The input voltage range for our free phase hybrid inverter for the Simo Gen24 Plus is 80 to 1000 volts. That means it's kind of uh, really, really flexible because strings from three modules on can be configured and therefore you're very, very flexible. Just look at this house I have put in here. Uh, so roofs are getting more and more complicated, uh, smaller uh, roof space. Uh, and therefore we have got the optimum device with the Gen24 Plus because uh, you're very, very flexible in the system design due to, due to the super flex. How to connect these strings to the Fronius Simo Gen24 Plus? So that's also uh, a common feedback I also receive in my trainings. And therefore this picture shows you the connection unit of the inverter. That means on the left side, you can see all the DC connections. You can see the DC plus port and the DC minus port. On the, on the, on the other part, on the right side, you see the AC terminal. That means here is the AC clamp, here is the PV point, ground terminal block. And in the middle, separated with uh, uh, separation plastic, you can see here is our data communication. That means from now on, uh, we do not have the data manager 2.0 anymore. It's now called the pilot, which is of course has, has got of course the same functionality and is our um, data communication card of the Gen24 Plus devices. What is important on the DC side for the system design? You see here you have two plus uh, inputs uh, on the MPP tracker one and one separate plus input. Uh, for the uh, MPP Tracker 2. So in total, you've got three uh, plus inputs and also three minus inputs for three strings. And one thing uh, on the clamp is a little bit black underlaid. That's the battery. You can, maybe you can read it here. It's the bat symbol and therefore it's plus and minus for battery plus and battery minus. And therefore you can directly connect a BYD uh, battery in the case of from now at the status from now on to the Simogen 24 plus device. Okay, so much to the inputs uh, on the DC side and also uh, we often receive the question, hey, how is it about the system design with Fronius or string design? So principally, I can strongly recommend you to use our Fronius Solar Configurator 4.0. So you can see here a screenshot of the Solar Configurator. It's kind of a very easy online tool where you can uh, 
to do a planning and dimensioning of um, PV systems together with Fronius. And it's subdivided by three bars. One bar here is the PV module. That means uh, here you can choose any PV module which is available, which is very popular. And you can also configure your own module. If you've got a special one, you can enter the, the, the data from the data sheet and then do the calculations with your specific module. In the middle, there is the inverter. That means uh, all our new inverters are fully integrated. All the Gen24 Plus devices you can find here and you can run a simulation. And on the third bar, there are some general topics like you can add, for example, a PV battery storage. You can check the compatibilities with the battery or look out so what's the right battery dimensioning when it comes to Fronius and the Gen24 Plus device. And again, please be aware of those DC input voltage ranges. Do not exceed the 1000 volts for the Simo Gen24 Plus and the 600 volts for the primer. So this uh, is very important uh, if you do a string configuration uh, to do not uh, exceed these values. Uh, that means in modules for a standardized model, module around about 24 modules in one string as a max. What is of course possible is um, to do overdimensioning of the PV generator. It means, for example, if you have got a Simo Gen24 Plus with 10 kilowatts, you can do um, overdimensioning on the DC side of up to 150%. It means you can put on the roof 15 kilowatt peak uh, of PV generator install installed power. That's of course possible uh, with the Gen24 Plus devices of Fronius. And the maximum input currents of 25 amps and 12.5 amps for the Tracker 2 and 25 amps for the Tracker 1. And for the primer, it looks a little bit different. And please be then sure to do not exceed the 600 volts uh, for the maximum uh, DC input voltage range. Okay, uh, so coming to the another big topic is DC SPD, that means surge protective device. So therefore, I can also provide you a solution from Fronius, which you can order from this week on, so very latest news today. So for the Gen24 Plus device, we also have got an inbuilt DC SPD. That's a DC SPD type 1 plus 2. So it's a combination of type 1 plus 2. Important for you to know that there is no assembly X factory. So you cannot order it uh, pre-installed. You have to do it uh, on your own, uh, also the inbuilding. And um, there is a feedback to the inverter from the uh, DCSPT, which goes to the wired shutdown on the pilot. You see it here, uh, how you configure it. And therefore you also have the feedback if, for example, there is an um, and search uh, and there is a triggering of the SPT that you kind of uh, have the feedback to the inverter that is important with, uh, and is um, currently the solution with the wired shutdown here. So that's an inbuilt to in solution, what is the big advantage? Of course, your customers do not have got an additional box uh, near the inverter. So everything is in-house in the casing of the Gen24 bus, which makes it more uh, optical uh, in a better way. And also it's a smooth solution, I would say, and uh, really a proper installation. So much to the SPD. Uh, now coming to another point uh, I've had on my product information uh, bubble is it's the PV point. So that's our integrated basic backup power function of the Gen24 Plus device. So it's integrated as standard and it's 100% free of charge. What is the PV point? You can see it here. Uh, it's just one simple socket in the household, which is supplied in case of a grid outage. It means if there is a grid outage, um, 
and you do not have a battery, for example, or you do not have any switch over components or separation common components for the grid, the inverter detects automatically the grid outage and then he, he kind of um, gives energy to this PV point if it's configured and installed, of course, and then the customer has got on one point within the household on this PV point electrical energy which he can take out of the socket and for example he can use it for recharging his mobile device or um, to run the fridge or, or something like that that's everything possible so it works with and without a battery and you do not have any time consuming additional installation required that means it's free of charge 100 percent integrated and gives you energy on this point uh, when the PV generator is, of course, also giving energy. That means during daytime situation, you can take this energy uh, and you can supply loads up to three kilowatts. If you're interested in the PV point, I can recommend you here the YouTube. So many, many customers already tested uh, the PV points to the max. So they did quite some interesting stuff. For example, they recharge their EV, uh, electric vehicle, or they run, they, try, they did some testing with their main heating systems. So everything worked properly. And I would say this is really a USP of the Gen 24 Plus and uh, a very cost effective solution for backup. Again, here one scheme I wanna show you how this works and how you see here the Gen 24 Plus device and the PV point installed. Now there happens a grid outage. Um, that means there is no separation units, uh, no se separation parts um, in the cabinet. That means uh, the inverter detects this grid outage and then he turns on this PV point. That means he gives energy to the PV point uh, depending on the PV yield you have at the moment and you have got safe energy on this point. You can also add it, of course, to a battery, then you also save during nighttime situation. Um, and this system is more or less running as an island uh, and you have got all the time on this PV point energy. And you can, of course, supply your most important devices, your mobile device with, for example, with electrical energy. How to install the PV point? Uh, I told you it's an own exit on the inverter. It's directly close to the AC clamp. You see it here. Uh, principally, we have got Vago clamps in our Gen24 Plus device. So they're really very, very installer friendly. You just unplug it, it, open the clamp, and then you can put in an isolated an unisolated cable to a max of 10 square millimeters uh, inside of the Vago clamp, close it and then plug it again into the Gen24 Plus device. So a plug and play solution more or less very, very easy to install. Coming back to the PV point, uh, you see here, it looks like this, the correct cabling. You just have to go from the socket um, to the grounding terminal block uh, with the grounding and then you have to and contact a, 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 a connection between neutral and protective earth. That means um, you kind of go out of one neutral to the grounding terminal block and then, uh, like I told before, from the PE to the socket. And that's the correct way it is done. Please be sure uh, about this intermediate step uh, with the grounding terminal block. What is important for the right uh, for the right socket? You see here we have got a very uh, easy solution. It's an RCT shuka mat called. It means you have here an integrated um, RCT. Uh, what is required, of course, you need to protect this the, the socket. Uh, principally, you can do it this way with an integrated one, or you use another with 30 milliamps. Um, type A RCT, that's sufficient. And some adapt, 
adaptions at the main body are important for the PV point. So uh, there is a drilling required. Uh, it means there are predefined exit at the uh, inverter. You can see them here. Just decide for one of them and then uh, drill a hole with, uh, yes, uh, and put in a PG clamp. It means uh, that's a modification you have to do it at, at the inverter uh, downside uh, in order to guarantee uh, a correct cabling of the PV point. That's also something you have to do uh, and what modification has to be done. So much to the PV point. Uh, I think that was very, very detailed information. And now also some news about the Fronius Smart Meter I can give you. So uh, we also launched a new one, the new Fronius Smart Meter. You can actually see here on the pictures in three different versions again. So it's the one phase, the single phase one, and the three phase one for residential solutions. And we also have a third one for bigger application with five kilo amps. Um, that means therefore you're in need for external current sensors, like you can see in the picture. What is also frequently asked is, for example, if you have got an existing PV system, uh, for example, out of our from your snap inverter series, and then you add a new Gen24 Plus device, uh, and uh, you know we can realize dynamic power regulation with Fronius. That means, for example, a 70% regulation, which is uh, required by the, by the grid supplier. And therefore, we also have a very, very good solution. And I will hand over now to Leo that he will give us uh, more information on that. Yeah, thank you, Sandro. Um, hello from Wales here. I'm Leo, as Sandro introduced me as well from product marketing. Uh, pleasure to be here today. Yes, I want to explain you uh, quickly the power regulation, the dynamic power regulation uh, with uh, mixed systems. So, uh, for example, a Gen24 Plus and a Snap Inverter or a Gen24 Plus and, uh, Plus and the other inverter from um, other man manufacturers so possible, of course, as well. So, in, there are two, basically two cases. So this is the um, first case where the uh, output power of the snap inverter is smaller or the same as the Gen24 Plus. So for example, nine kilowatt um, uh, nominal output power for the snap inverter and 10 kilowatt nominal output power for the Simo Gen24 Plus. And in this case, uh, there's just one smart meter necessary. And you have to do some settings in the uh, web user interface of the Simo Gen24 Plus in this case so you have to configure it, the smart meter at the feed-in point. It's uh, detail, detailed um, explained here. And you have to do some um, grid regulations, so safety and grid regulations. You have to do an export limitation, type in uh, the, the value of the power limit uh, of the system. In this case, it's uh, 19,000 watt peak. So uh, the, the 9 kilowatt from the snap inverter plus the 10 kilowatt from the Simo chain. So that's 19,000 watt peak. And then under the maximum grid feed-in power, you um, put in the desired value for power reduction. So in, for example, in Germany, 70% um, um, power reductions is mostly required. And you can put in this value in percentage or in, in, in what peak. And um, another point that I want to mention here is that dynamic power reduction is always limited by the nominal output power of the inverter with the lower power. So in this case, it's limited um, by nine kilowatt, <coughs> kilowatt. So you can um, regulate the power between nine and 19 kilowatt. So that's the first case. And then there is a second case. So the second example is that the output power of the snap inverter is bigger than the Gen24 plus output power. So in this case, 15 kilowatt and 10 kilowatt. And in this case, when you want to do a dynamic power regulation, you need two smart meters for this. So then um, on the web interface from the Simo Chain 24 Plus, you just uh, need co to configure it the smart meter at the feed-in point and um, yeah, the rest of the settings, so the desired value of power reduction, you have to enter at the snap inverter web user interface. And then again, uh, the power reduction is always limited by the um, nominal output power of the 
smaller inverter. Don't forget this. So in this case, you can regulate your power between 25 and 10 kilowatt. So zero feed-in um, is uh, just possible with third-party components at the moment, uh, but we will keep you up to date on this topic as well. Yes. Thanks a lot, Leo, for that. So, um, so much to the dynamic power regulation in some mixed scenarios with existing Fronius inverters and uh, the new Gen 24 Plus device. Okay, and one thing is the Fronius Solar Web. Maybe also some news uh, about that. Uh, maybe you have came across it in the past days uh, and have a look, had a look on your PV systems. Uh, we did here a redesign. That means basically it's the same, but the colors change a little bit. It means uh, it's in a more fresh, uh, young design. Uh, you can see it here at the, at the start page. The current power uh, is now a little bit different. Also the energy balance. So please don't be afraid. Uh, at first sight, it looks a little bit unfamiliar. It was also the same case for me, uh, but uh, it makes totally sense. Uh, just look at the daily energy balance. The yellow one is now that energy that comes from, if it is consumed directly from the sun, from the PV system. The green one is the battery storage, which is stored. And the red one, kind of linked to heat, uh, is the power to the own pilot. And the, the gray one you can see here is the power to the grid. It means that's the thing we actually want to avoid because we want to make 100% use of our own produced energy. One thing which will also come the next days, uh, hopefully, is the Fronius Solar Web app. So we will soon have, as a, it's in the starting blocks, that means that's our overall new app uh, and it's a replacement of the existing Solar Web Live app. That means that's a mobile app application where you can really connect also all Gen24 Plus devices in it and all other Fronius inverters. So that's the overall new Fronius uh, in monitoring app, uh, which will come, I would I think, this week, uh, at the end of this week, it will be launched. I have um, gathered some screenshots uh, in advance for you. So that's how it will look, basically. So on the one hand, that's the current power view. It reminds on the on the view I uh, showed you before in the solar web uh, with the actual energy flows. And the other screenshot is a daily view, again, the same colors, uh, which in the desktop version of the solar web. So that's how it will look like. And you have all the time your PV system in your pocket uh, and supervising is always possible, of course. And further uh, open interfaces. So that means uh, also regarding the last point in the product information is that we are, of course, ready to communicate with third party components and when it comes to e-mobility solutions or energy management. We're therefore 100% ready. Uh, you see here uh, our centralized device here is the Gen24 Plus device. So that's our key product for sector integration. And therefore, therefore we provide uh, a huge variety of interfaces. Uh, I've listed them up here. Uh, in order that we can organize all the communication with, uh, for example, uh, for uh, with heat pumps or general hot water generation, cooling, uh, EV mobility, that's quite a topic here in Austria already, and also consumer loads. Uh, intelligence is coming more and more, and we have got all this packed in our centralized Gen24 Plus inverter. Okay. That was now the first part of the webinar. The second part now is the technical information. So the first one was a little bit the product information, which was in some parts also very technical. But now we really have a deeper look into the customer uh, inquiries uh, from a technical perspective. One thing is the Solar Start app, uh, which is already out now. So that's available in the App Store. What is the Solar Start? That's our uh, installation and commissioning app. 
It means uh, from now on, every Fronius device can be uh, initially commissioned with this Fronius Solar Start. It means there are three easy steps. You see it here in the screenshot. It's the network, the product in the solar web wizard, and you can then do the commissioning. I can show it here. I've already downloaded it. So it's the solar start, looks like this, and you can um, just choose your product you want to have, if whether if it's Gen 24 Plus, the Tauro in future, also Snap-in or other uh, Fronius devices like the Data Manager Box 2.0, you can use this Fronius Solar Start for all your Fronius applications. And uh, I did it myself multiple times. I can tell you from experience that this is really, really easy. So within a few minutes, uh, you were done with the installation and commissioning. And that's uh, a huge benefit and which also makes installation process even more faster. And uh, to the data communication, how it principally works, you see this data communication card has to be commissioned via the Fronius Solar Start uh, app, and then you can uh, guarantee the, the data transmission to Solar Web. That means uh, with all web enabled devices, you have access anywhere and anytime uh, to the Fronius Solar Web portal. One thing, we also often receive the question, so why has got the inverter no display anymore? So why is this missing? Uh, I can tell you this is uh, in fact a big advantage because uh, in the past we often had got customers having troubles with the display because uh, at some points you have to do settings on the displays and then you have to do settings on the inverter interface. So you have two paths where you have work on which of course leads to sometimes a little, little bit misunderstanding. And so this is another step where we wanna simplify the whole product uh, with this uh, inverter communication to the human. That means the only interaction point between us as humans and to the inverter is this uh, button in the middle and two lights. On the left, you see the operation LED, that means that shows you, okay, is the inverter currently producing? And on the right, you have the communication LED. That means, is the inverter connected to the solar web and are the data sent over to it? And you can do three things. Uh, one quick push is the activation of the Wi-Fi access point. That is in fact required. For example, if you want to do the initial commissioning with the solar start, you have to activate at first the Wi-Fi access point and then open the app. Two quick pushes uh, is the VPS function, that means the Wi-Fi protected setup. Some uh, routers have got these functions and then you connect it, can connect it directly. And one long, long push is a quitting of service messages and activation of the key lock, which is also if it's in some public places installed, um, maybe a benefit. The smartphone app is one thing. Uh, I strongly recommend you to use this app because it's a very good app and makes life more easier. And we all strive to make life more easier. The other version, like you're maybe used to it, is the web browser, so which is uh, basically still available. So you can still do the commissioning like you have done it with the Snap Inverter. Uh, open the access point open your laptop, connect to the wife, to the interface of the inverter, uh, open the browser and then enter the IP address, uh, which is all the time the same, uh, 192.168.250.181, you can read it here. And that's of course the second path, which will be still available and is another option, but please, prefer this way with the smartphone app because it's much more convenient and, and keep this as an option uh, if for some reasons uh, there are troubles with the first step. So, okay, so much to the commissioning uh, and also one important thing when it comes to the battery, for example, if you realize uh, a power package with Gen24 Plus and PYT battery, and there is something you have to consider. 
that means uh, there is a sequence when switching on. So we basically say, please be sure to do first all the work on the PYD battery. That means uh, plug it together, uh, do the initial commissioning of the battery. Uh, and then the second step is the inverter. That means um, if everything is done and the battery is switched on, then go to the inverter and turn on the DC disconnector uh, to one position and then it works properly. Otherwise, uh, there is, we had some feedback that it can happen that the battery is not detected and the system is not working. So please be sure to keep in mind this sequence. This is uh, very important to avoid any misunderstandings. The smart meter we had already, so um, I have put here in one slide uh, because I often received the question also in my trainings, what's the difference between the new smart meter, which is actually here, and the old one or the existing one like here. Basically, it has got the same function, so both of them are bidirectional Modbus meters um, and the only thing uh, I all the time tell the new Fronus smart meter is kind of a facelift, like car manufacturers are uh, from time to time renewing their, their fleets with facelifts. So also we renewed uh, our smart meter portfolio with a facelift. It means it has got the same functions, but uh, it's a little bit better in usability. It's a little bit easier in installation. It's a little bit smaller effectively from the size um, and also the connections are a little bit different because here at the existing one, uh, you go in with the AC bus uh, at the bottom and also go out at the bottom with the AC bus uh, and the data communication port is on top. And with the new front of smart meter, you go in from the top with the AC bus and go out again uh, on the bottom. That means that's uh, locally um, separated now and the data communication port is here below the Fronius logo. You can see it here. Again, Modbus, uh, RTU, D plus, D minus and ground. And one terminating resistor, please be all the sure um, to check your terminating resistance here because that's, um, I would say also a major reason why our, our colleagues from tech support have got a lot to do because sometimes they are missing, that means always at the end of the Modbus communication line, this termination resistance has to be set and this is important. Please keep that in mind. Again, here one slide uh, with the uh, how it is connected to the pilot of the Gen24 Plus. Uh, you have here the new Fronio smart meter and here this bridging for the 100, 100, uh, 120 ohms termination. And uh, on the inverter, that means on the data man on the data communication card, you do this terminating here. That means here's Modbus zero and Modbus one and zero one. That means uh, depending on uh, if you have here a termination resistance to set, switch it to the on. Principally, we have got two Modbus uh, interfaces here. We have got Modbus zero and Modbus one. That leads me already to the next slide, uh, which is effectively doesn't make any difference what you use. It means whether you want to use Modbus 0 or Modbus 1, um, that isn't depending, that's the same functionalities. Uh, you can use whatever you want. Um, and um, we, you are now more flexible. You can also, for example, if you have a battery in the smart meter, set the battery on. Modbus 0 and set the smart meter on Modbus 1, that's possible, but you can also combine them, for example, like at the data manager on Modbus 0, it's also um, possible. So that's really depending on you and your uh, kind of what you prefer, how to work. Um, that's uh, also important to know because that's also frequently asked here, but please be sure to keep this in mind. Uh, I want to hook in here quickly, Sandro. 
for one additional information yes. regarding the, Mod the Modbus communication. As you said, of course, uh, Modbus 1 and uh, 0 are technically uh, equal. Um, but uh, from the software 1.9.7, so that's the current software, uh, the M1 Modbus is active by default. But with an older software, so below the 197, the Modbus 1 interface uh, must be activated manually. So keep this, uh, uh, keep an eye on this. If you uh, commission your system, um, look, take a look at your software. And if it's below 1.9.7, you have to activate the Modbus 1 manually. Yes. Thanks for this information. Yes. Just check the software version like Leo told you. Oh, at least it must be the 1.9 and then it's everything activated by default. And uh, the activation is uh, also done like this. You can see it here. Uh, this is one screenshot from the from the commissioning that means there is one point where you have to add all components uh, all the components which are in the system whether it's a pv generator the primary meter uh, that means a smart meter or the battery or the own pilot everything you have here what well, which is configured has to be added uh, to the inverter and one thing is of course the from your smart meter the grid connection point um, just add it here and the good news, if you can find it here, so it, if the inverter finds it automatically, you have done all the terminating resistance correctly. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't turn up and you have to check uh, your Modbus communication. One thing, uh, we are slightly coming to an end, but also very important is the LED status display. It means, uh, you know, I've put in here on screenshot, that's the operation mode we want to achieve all the time. So the operation LED is green and the communication LED is blue. That means the inverter is running properly and the network is connected and that's the more or less the status we want to achieve all the time. Of course, there are different inverter status, uh, they have all different meanings. I will not go into detail about that, but um, it's kind of sometimes self-explanatory. If there is something red lighting, and there must be uh, anything, any error. Uh, when it's uh, yellow, yellow light always means, okay, it's, it, it's in a ramp up phase, or it's uh, kind of standby, something like that. Please just check this inverter status uh, in the manuals if something appears which is not quite familiar to you um, or uh, open an access point, uh, connect to the inverter and look for it or have a look into SolarWeb, uh, then you often get an uh, answer to your issues. And this is, uh, uh, of course, um, the worst case if you have here a red, uh, a red LED, that means here uh, we have got a, uh, a critical error. That means in this case, the inverter would kind of create a four digit code. That's a status a state code, Fronius. That means there are no state code groups anymore, like for the previous uh, inverter series where we had kind of different error classes. This is not anymore. Um, Therefore, please just check this code which is turning up and then uh, I can refer you to the Fronius uh, uh, Solar SOS. That means that's our 100% uh, digital online tool which will also come in a mobile application. That means um, if you are not using this Fronius SOS so far, I can really strongly recommend you to use it. It's our overall service tool, which you can use. And um, it's a self-service tool, so that means you do not have any, any waiting times in our, in our tech support hotline anymore. You can, it's 24 seven available. And this new app will come at the end of this year. That means this is really straightforward and a really improvement 
um, because therefore you can then chat with the tech support, you can open cases on your own, you can have kind of um, an integrated declaration of consent if you want to register, uh, and really, really, really advanced features. Uh, it's a really, really good tool. Just go for the Solar SOS. It saves you another time and money on a long term, for sure. And for the third party components, maybe uh, I also hand back again to Leo. He is the expert on this third party integration. Yes, thank you, Santo. Um, yeah, on this slide, I just want to mention that um, the compatibility of the snap inverters and the Gen24 Plus is slightly different. So not all the, um, the compatibilities are the same. So please check always our list on our homepage uh, with the Gen24 Plus where we put all the, the current uh, compatibilities, of, compatibilities of our Simo Gen24 Plus. Um, and please be always sure to keep your inverter up to date because sometimes we also um, yeah, update the inverter with new uh, compatible third party components. So always take, take a look at that, that, that list, but I think Sandra will guide you um, on our website where you can find all the important information at a glance as well. Yes, thanks, Leo. That was actually the last slide. Uh, I now quickly wanna give you an insight into a very helpful um, website. That's of course the Fronius website, but a subsite. It's uh, everything related to the Fronius Simo Gen 24 Plus inverter. Just go type in fronius.com and then go into the Solar Energy Division and to products and solutions and then to the Simo Gen 24 Plus. And on this page, uh, that's really, really massive content for you. So all the details are listed up. You have here all the download sector if you wanna have a brochure or a certification of conformity. Anything you wanna have uh, is um, kind of linked here. And also um, digital operating instructions, it means the e-manual is uh, linked here and also uh, other important information which are popping up every now and then. So that means uh, we kind of are really closely connected to all different departments and everything is listed up here. So give it a look, have it try. You can of, of, for sure save some time and save some money again if you're well prepared for your first installations. And yes, that's so much a very useful tool on our homepage. Okay, coming back to the last slide, maybe Leo, we want to use the last minutes for answering questions uh, from the audience. Did you receive any questions? Of yeah, we received a lot of questions. Um, most of them I could answer in the chat. Um, one uh, attendee asked, can we have this recording to view it again? Of course, we will send out the recording and the slides um, in, a few, in the next few days. So you all will get this presentation. Then there was a question regarding the PV point. Um, how is the PV point um, supplied when, the, when AC is gone? Uh, the PV point, uh, just to mention this, the PV point is just supplied when AC is gone. So just during a grid outage. When you when the, the grid is operating in the normal um, yeah when you are in normal op normal operating mode the PV point is not active so please keep this in mind. Then we have some questions regarding the smart meter. Um, is for the 35 amp point, uh, three phase do we need additional current rings for the for the smart meter? No, you just need external uh, current um, CTs for the 5k. Um, um, K amp, uh, or am I wrong here, Sandro? Please hook in if I'm wrong here. But I think we just need external uh, current transformers for the 5K smart meter. Yes. No, you're right on the on the KO. Okay. Perfect. So for the uh, third, uh, 65 amps, you don't need external ones. Yes. Um, then there are questions. Is it possible to use the inverter as a backup system using the BBD batteries? Um, and the standard AC output. 
um, possible to use the inverter as a backup system using the BBD batteries and the standard AC output. I don't know what you mean with the standard AC yes, output. Uh, if this is uh, meant that you do not want to use the separate one, the PB point, yes, that would be the full backup Hermes. Um, so in this case, um, we are fully compatible with BYD and we can realize a full backup. That means, um, therefore, you would need additional switch over components uh, from the grid, but uh, you can, in combination with a battery and such switch over components, realize real free phase backup power. That means you can supply the entire household with uh, free phase backup power uh, with the battery and you can run it in complete island mode uh, for um, more days, more weeks, blackout scenario, we talk about two weeks. And that's in combination with the BYD and the standard AC output. I know what you mean. I can understand that uh, 100% possible, yes. Um, then there's a question regarding the compatibility uh, for the LG Camo Resu. No, this battery will not be compatible because it um, won't be produced anymore. So LG is launching a new battery generations and of course it will be compatible with them, but no more infos on that because it's uh, kind of a secret, but we are, there will be a compatibility next year. We will of course keep you updated. Uh, another question is uh, where can I find technical information on implementing the full backup? Uh, just uh, take a look at the um, operating manuals. We also have HTML version of the operating manuals. So uh, we are really um, uh, high developed here. So you don't need to, to, to download the PDF. You can also use the HTML version of the operating manual where you can find all the information for the full backup. Yes, I think okay. we, are through, we went through all the questions. So yes. Far. Thanks. Uh, okay, thanks, Leo. Uh, thanks again for your very interesting questions. We just stay a few minutes online afterwards and will answer your questions. Thank you for participation. Unfortunately, at the moment, uh, presence trainings uh, are not possible in Austria due to the situation. But uh, I would uh, be really, really happy if uh, trainings happen again very, very soon because of course uh, there is huge demand uh, with the new product. Just check uh, our homepage for upcoming trainings. Maybe we can meet one time personally and spend one day uh, with Gen24 Plus and, and doing all settings and um, really, really going into deep detail. Just stay online. I hope you enjoyed this format. So it was today a little bit different because uh, it really went into some technical topics which are popping up at the moment, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you can also give us feedback if you wish more for that. I will now close it. I will no longer talk to you and want to extend this webinar. So thanks again. Thanks for your participation. I wish you all the best. Please stay fit, stay healthy. That's the most important thing. And I hope we see or hear us again very soon. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.